have a guest today, Jesse. Have you ever pulled a chick shaw? No, I haven't. Have you ever pulled 33 chickens at one no, time? No, I haven't. Okay, let's see. Let's shot. see how it is. First time. Easy, easy kick. <laughs> wheels, weight centered on the wheels. You dare go across this bridge? I'm gonna try. Okay, keep it in the middle. I've been raising chickens for like 10 years. Slowly over time, I became the apron wearing. Permaculture Chicken Ninja. Master. You don't look at them. You act like you're not seeing them. And there you go, you catch them. And I've always had this sense, lucky me, I've always had this sense that chickens and anything else, any other kind of animal on the farm needs to be moving. It's probably because I was fortunate enough to be influenced by Joel Salatin as one of my first influencers on raising food. We call this mob stocking herbivorous solar conversion lignified carbon sequestration fertilization. He keeps those animals moving. So when you're just when you're just a homestead and you have maybe 12 to 36 chickens, how do you move chickens? At first I found this A-frame design and it was great. To say Jonah you guys help me push this thing up this hill. And I could move them around in the yard. But what about going out into the pastures? We've rubbed up against the bank here. Don't know if we'll be able to push. Come on, let's try guys. The problem with the A-frame was it set so low and it was so heavy. One, two, three. Nope. That thing is not pushing because it's hung up here. I'm just about to gird up my loins and pick this thing up. It got hard to move. And then I was reading in an Elliot Coleman book. He's a gardener, but he envisioned what he called a chickshaw, taking from the idea of the rickshaw. I believe you say it rickshaw, technically, but we're, we're taking it over. We're, we're gonna call it the shaw. Elliot had sketched out this drawing in his New Organic Grower book, excellent book, by the way, of his vision for a chickshaw. And it was really neat because it had these big wheels, you carried it like a rickshaw, and you could move them further and in different places and they weren't necessarily on the ground which was an advantage to me the a-frame they're on the ground which can be good I mean they can till and whatnot but if we got them up off the ground their manure would still fall through and in the morning before we let them out we could move them anywhere they anywhere we wanted to go and we didn't have to kind of just skid along and hope nobody got ran over I looked online for plans or something about this rickshaw see if anybody was doing it and I found them I found somebody who was manufacturing a metal one and they sold a kit now the kit didn't comp wasn't complete with the nesting box and whatnot so I think it was going to be about a thousand dollars maybe twelve hundred dollars if I remember right by the time I got the kit and everything that seemed kind of steep for moving around and I, I don't think that thing was rated even for um, three dozen birds so it was just kind of like ah and finally I was like what if I build one not of metal pieces that are hard to come by so with this we could just put a supporting tuba for wherever we need to according to this yeah so grab two of those what if I built something that other people could go and get the supplies for at like Lowe's or Home Depot hardware store. All right, let's go home. And put it together. At the hardware store now for our list, our supply list. Oh, it's not too bad. And I built it. I built what I call Chickshaw 1.0 and it was absolutely amazing. It was everything I wanted it to be, plus some. Ooh. You guys are heavy adding the extra birds in there. And that thing has been very popular. It's been one of my most popular articles on my blog at AbundantPermaculture.com. A thousand people downloaded those plans in just the first day. And now I've gone on the farm tour. I am back. A new energy. I said it's time for a Chickshaw 2.0.
the main concept is still there and it's still beautiful. Chickshaw 1.0 is still amazing, but I've made some changes. Let me tell you the benefits of the Chickshaw. First of all, the Chickshaw isn't too big. So one person can move it, but all, it's also heavy enough that it's not gonna just blow away in the wind. Two feet, and two feet straight across, it's super easy to build. That's all the chicken needs. They got a foot to roam, they got two feet to roam towards the end at the nest boxes. The nest box start at a foot, so they've got even a foot to go under the nest boxes, and then they have the nest box area. It's plenty of room for chickens for their hotel room. They just stay in it at night. And then it's big enough, it's six foot by six foot, that that will actually hold. You do a surf's up, that's nine inches on a perch, and perches are spread out a foot apart. This thing will hold 39 chickens. One person can now move 39 chickens without a tractor. And you think they're squished in there, they're not. If you sneak up on them in at night, they're gonna be actually probably huddled up and you'll see that there's even more room. So I'm gonna rate this at three dozen. Let's say three dozen chickens plus a goose, max 39, 40. I'll, I'll let you have 40 if you, if you really are pinched. Notice how the front is open. The key to keeping chickens happy is plenty of ventilation. So the front, the whole front is open and a third of the side of the front is open. They also have more ventilation through the back, through the milk crates that serve as the nesting box. And while we're talking about the milk crates for the nesting box, those are self-cleaning. You buy the milk crates, they're ready to go, except you cut an arch out the front. These milk crates are just perfect. They have a natural arch already in it. You just cut along that with your saw. And then the milk crates, because of their webbing, already have automatic self-cleaner. There's webbing in the bottom, so dirt falls through that and they're constantly self-cleaning. And the good news is that falls down through and our floor, our floor of our chick shaw, a lot of people make this mistake, they make a floor with half inch wire mesh, why? Because it's easy to get a hold of. You can get it at any hardware store or tractor supply. But what you wanna do is get a one inch wire mesh and that way the manure falls through and then still one inch is small enough that a predator, major predator, I mean, not a snake, but a predator can get through. But that's an advantage of this thing with say snakes. So you have problems with snake, we did the other day. I was looking at the eggs and look what we have there. That was kind of freaky. So another reason to get the eggs every day, guys. We just moved it just a wee little bit. And you remove the snake and put it somewhere else. Uh, here we go. Want eat the chicken? Uh, I don't think so. Bye bye my tail! Jordan, look at it! Hold this. Yeah. Hold this. It's bigger than the last snake we saw. Has he eaten egg? We're gonna grab him behind the head, hold on. Oh, he's right. smelling the air. You ready? Is that what he's doing? Yeah, with his tongue. Let's keep talking about the nesting boxes. The nesting boxes you can pull out from the outside. My motto is, why go inside that coop if you don't have to? <laughs> so let's stay out of that coop. You pull the nesting boxes out, you can harvest your eggs, you can replenish the nesting material. We like to use hay. Or, hey, what if you got a broody hen? And you, you can take that broody hen out with that box and take her to a broody area and replace that box for your for your chickens. You could take that broody hen in to a broody breaker. You could use those baskets if you forgot your egg collecting basket. You could use those that milk crate in a pinch to collect your eggs. At the nesting box area, we have a swivel bar in front of it. It serves as a landing bar so the chickens can jump up on it and then easily get in their nest box. Now, that's, it also swivels so you can lift it up if you were to say need to block the chickens out of there because sometimes chickens get in the habit of sleeping in the nesting box and then they poop in it and that kind of stuff. So let them lay their eggs, go out about after lunch or so, put that swivel bar up or you know, if you're a working person, do it after work, put that swivel bar up and then that way the chickens can't get in there at night and perch and nest and you do that for a couple of weeks and then you can go back to normal and it's broken by it. Of course, you need to go, while you're doing that, you need to go out in the morning and undo that swivel bar. We have a latch so that you can easily do that and, and let that swivel bar down and the chickens uh, can be free to go in there and lay. This time with Chickshaw 2.0, we put the wheels on center at three feet. It makes it so much easier to pull them. Problem with that is though, sometimes if, it's, if, if your weight is centered here, the reason I had put the wheels in the back towards the back with the chickshaw 1.0 is because, so it wouldn't topple. 
but if you put the wheels in the middle, you have some, uh, it top, it's, top, it's, it's happened, it's toppled. But it was an easy fix. I made a kickstand in the back that you can put down. If you need it, you don't always need it in the area because sometimes you can counterweight up front with a nesting box. Up front, I've put a nesting box. No, why am I saying nesting box? Sometimes you can counterweight this with a dust box full of sand. I've made an area for a dust box up front in the chick shawl, keeps it dry. That can be a counterweight and can fight against the possibility of it tipping. Also, I've seen some people hang feeders and waters on the handle. Action! Andrew, you're What's uh -oh. the bucket, Andrew? Uh, it's a waterer. That could be another counterweight, so you might not need a kickstand in that case. Let's go forward to the handles. On my Chick Show 1.0, I put the handles all the way across. We had a big long pole, and that was fine, but now I brought them in. We figured out a way to still make it strong and bring the handles in. So now they're only four feet wide. You can actually access the door from the side of the handles. To pull the handles, we have a metal chain link fence top rail that we can put inside these handles, and now, for the first time, we have metal pins that go on either side, so that way your bar doesn't slide out when you're moving, but the bar can be removed. You would want to remove it maybe to have better access, or remove that bar and prop up your roof. Why would you need to prop up the roof? Well, the only time I need to prop up the roof is if maybe I'm gonna catch all those chickens, but I don't know, it's sometimes, if, if, if maybe it's at night and I need to catch those chickens for harvest or something, you could, you could put up the roof I'm trying to think of reasons you might want the roof. I try to avoid getting in there as much as possible because if you were gonna harvest chickens, you could just maybe let one out at a time out the door and that might be an easier way, but let's just have a roof just, just cause what if, what if we need to? I put an area for a mineral feeder, a two spot mineral feeder where you could put, kelp. I like to put kelp and oregonite in there at all times, free choice. I put it towards the front of the coop so that you don't have to <laughs> go in the coop, you just open the door and ex access your minerals. Notice that on this chick shawl, the door also serves as a ramp, so there's a lot of multi-purpose here. You see how the handle turned into the prop for the roof, the door is also the ramp, and we hinged it on the bottom board so that the ramp has a minimal slope, but it's still easy enough for them to get back in. This time we put the locks on the top of the door to the sides instead of at the very top because when it's at the top, the lock actually set on the ground when you open it. Now, with it to the sides, it's double locked one and it comes down and it doesn't sit on the ground. Hold on, I'm coming soon. Another multi-purpose of this thing is this coop is also their shade. We made it high enough and that's another common mistake. Besides the, one in, the people not putting it one inch wire mesh in the bottom, they build their mobile coop too short we wanted it to get high off the ground so that chickens could go underneath it. And during the day, it's a shade. You gotta get these big tires. They're specially ordered from Northern Tool. They're expensive. They're like 120 for two tires. But they do not pop. They don't have air in them. I've seen people, I've done bicycle tires. It can be a nightmare over time. I have the chickshaw roof square on there to prevent against wind. In the back though, I do have one four inch overhang. That's to keep your nesting box, nesting material from getting wet. Notice that the nesting boxes are open. That's for more ventilation. That lip keeps the nesting boxes dry. And I have it set up so that the nesting box go inside and rest on the two by twos inside. And they're kind of sort of locked in place. And they're not gonna slide out. And they're two inches in to be even further from exposure to the elements, even blowing rain. So in review, this chick shaw is super mobile, super easy to move, up to 39 chickens. For the first time, one person can move a lot of birds. There's been the problem of, how am I gonna move just three dozen chickens without a tractor? Now you can. This coop has is multi-purpose. It's in an area where you want them to garden. It's in an area where you want them to till. It's in an area where you want them to manure and fertilize. The manure comes through. You don't have to clean it. This, this, this thing is self-cleaning. Manure falls through the floor. Uh, the nesting boxes are self-cleaning. Yes, I will be there in just one second. I'm almost done. And now, 
it's easy to build. We've outlined every single step. We've taken a picture for every single step. We've made a video that accommodates every single step. And I'm absolutely, and I'm giving this away absolutely for free. You join my email list. I send you the plans via email. And then, if you would, if you'd be so kind to then share this video, you'll get access to the step-by-step -step video. So, again, you go down to the link. If you want these plans, cut list, links to the material on Lowe's, all the uh, equipment and tools necessary to build this with links and if you don't have that. And then step by step, easy to follow. Most of you are probably not construction workers or carpenters. You can follow this, we made it that easy. You sign up in the link in the description. You'll get a page that says, hey, thanks for signing up. I'm sending you an email with the plans and I'll send you an email with the plans. It'll be a Google Doc. And that way you guys can get in there. And if there's a mistake, you know, we, we it's a typo or whatever, you guys can actually make a comment there and we can fix it. So these plans will actually keep on getting better and better over time. It's not gonna be a PDF because those tend to be more permanent. It's gonna be flexible and folks can make comments. I'm very excited about that new feature. Let's so, see how it is. First time. <laughs> easy, easy kick. Wheels, weight centered on the wheels. You dare go across this bridge? I'm gonna try. Okay. No. You dare go through here or you want me to do it? Right, it's a little tougher through here, I'll give it to you, because there's a ditch. You're on a, uh, you're on a hump. Yep. Come on. Yes. <laughs> You're doing good. Thirty-three chickens. What's going on? It's never this. It's usually One moving. man. <laughs> One man moving thirty-three chickens. All by himself. No tractors. <laughs>